So hi everyone, my name is Victor, and um, thank you for coming today. And today I'm going to talk about React. So React is a JavaScript library for creating the uh, user interface. And uh, I'm a software engineer. And I know how you feel for your day-to-day -day job. How many people here are developers? Oh, all of you are yeah, developers. Yeah, I know. I know how you feel. And how about Angular, Angular JS developers? Oh, cool. How about Meteor JS? I'm a Meteor JS developer. React JS developer here. Any anyone? Oh. Awesome. So. Uh, so as, as our job as a developer, you know, sometimes we write our code, it just doesn't feel right. Because there's a, for example, especially true for creating a UI, there's so many possible states, and there's uh, no way you can test all of them. And also the DOM is uh, mutable, and also the, you, you can't expect what the user will input, they will input something that you're out of expectation, then it's, uh, there's something, a lot of things that could happen and uh, it just doesn't feel right. And the art of programming is the art of organizing complexity. ReactJS is a library that helps you to organize the complexity. And uh, first, I let me talk about what is React. <coughs> React is the view of uh, view of MVC, which is Model View Controller. It's not a complete framework like Meteor.js with the back end. You can use it with uh, Flux or uh, React Router for a full MVC, for full MVC. But but this is out of the scope for today's presentation. We're just focusing focusing on the view. And uh, React is built by Facebook and Instagram, which is also Facebook as well. So uh, if you go to Facebook.com and then you go to see uh, this comment box, this comment box is a React component. And then inside the comment box, there's a comment form. And then also the comment list. Inside the comment list is uh, each individual comments. So you can think of UI as a box, and then inside is a box, and inside is a box. That's the way to think of UI. And uh, and there's uh, so much so many challenges uh, for Facebook to fill with lots of to manage the states. So they solve it by building the React uh, React uh, to solve their problems. So why React? There's uh, three reasons. First one is you can write some reusable and testable uh, React components. Everything in React is uh, think of as a concept of uh, components. It's not you thinking it's a templating engine, a templating system that we're using familiar with, such as uh, Angular or uh, uh, Directive or the uh, handlebar of spacebar for Meteor.js. And also it's fast because, uh, the, because of the virtual DOM and also there's, uh, you can build UI with data that changes over time. And I will explain further and we'll show some benchmark as well. So first, React component. So for those of you uh, who use Meteor, I was a Meteor JS developer as well. And then, you know, there's a problem when you're using the templating system. For example, if you're using each, how do you get the index? How do you get the index from the, from the uh, each items? You need to write some other code to hack it. There's no, it's not out of the box provided by the spacebar uh, template. So there's a uh, less flexibility. And using uh, React, you can just write JavaScript code. It's more flexible. And also, there's a greater separation of concerns because it's lot, lots, uh, a lot like uh, Angular. You have all the different files, all the HTML files, all the different JS files. They're doing uh, separate in different places, but you are also, but you are still doing the same thing. You're still doing the same concern with rendering the same UI, so it's uh, better with a uh, higher with a uh, better to do in a uh, React way. And also for the for if you're using Backbone, you probably you have a handlebar template, and then on the server side you have the Rail server, and then you you could use ERB or some other templating system. But then now you can do client side and the server side both in React as well. So that's one of the reasons that's awesome. And let me show you some code here. This is an example on how you create a React component. First, you create a variable and a component. 
and then you call the react dot create class. How do you get the React? Is you you could either use a CDN or you can use a file install or you can use browser file or require require the React library, and then you can create a class. And what it does is just rendering a uh, item token function, and then create a React uh, re return a uh, React dot. The first argument here is the, the attributes of the element. The second one is the context that you are, uh, want to render for the DOM element. And this, these two slides are doing exactly the same thing, but just different syntax. This one is uh, using JSX, which is XML-like syntax, and it looks much easier to read, because you can put HTML, uh, HTML inside your JavaScript, and uh, a lot of people doesn't like React because of this. And, and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking back to the, back to the uh, old days, we are using PHP and Rails, we <coughs> all tied together. But uh, let me explain it, uh, explain it further for the benefits for doing uh, this way. But uh, just a sign up here, if you're using JSX, at the beginning you need to uh, put the, uh, specify it at the top of your files for, for tell, to tell it's uh, JSX. And also, you need to either include the JSX transformer, or you need the React tools to convert it back to the JavaScript uh, files. And also, if you want to put a class name on the this div, you could you couldn't use just uh, just class. You need to put class name instead. And then, so we are just uh, create a React component. How do we render it to the DOM? It's very easy. Just React dot render. In a, if you read some old, uh, old version of code, it would be react.render component. But nowadays it's deprecated, so it's just uh, render. And the first argument is your component, second argument is your node in your, in your HTML tag, which is uh, get the ID, my ID, my, my div, and it's rendered to hello. Yeah. And uh, as I mentioned, you can do server side rendering. And uh, it's great for SEO, which is not CEO. Last time, but <laughs> I was talking about CEO if you watch the YouTube video. <laughs> so it's great for uh, SEO, and uh, how it works is this render is a string uh, instead of uh, the DOM, and then it send a string from the server to the client, and the client will handle the string uh, on, on the client side. So next is about performance. So uh, one of the challenges we have uh, in the tradition traditionally is uh, we sometimes we just need to update a little tiny bit, maybe just update a number. But sometimes we need to render the whole component or ren even render the whole page. It's very expensive to uh, work with the DOM because the DOM is slow. And so uh, Facebook invented the virtual DOM, and how it works is there's a div algorithm. So it compares what is the new what's the new one uh, new virtual DOM with the old virtual DOM, and then compare it and then see what's the difference. And it's know what's the difference, and then do the reconciliation with a minimal DOM manipulation, just just updating the difference, and then do it as a batch way. Uh, so uh, uh, do minimal uh, DOM manipulation. So benchmark. So on the on your left hand side is the key value observing framework such as Ember or Meteor. On your right hand side is a virtual DOM which is red. If you are talking about rendering 25 items, it doesn't really matter. You can also use jQuery, it doesn't really matter. But uh, for 10K items, you can see there's a significant improvement in terms of the time to render it. And why is it? It's because of the big O notation for the time complexity. One is the big O of N, which is the model. One is big O of V, which is the wheel. In uh, most of our use cases, our model is much bigger than the wheel. And Especially, well, that's why when you try to uh, run a Meteor app on your mobile, your phone get really hot because it uses up all your memories, <laughs> and then it start to burn. <laughs> burn, burn. Yes. It's get pretty hot. It's, it's got pretty, pretty hot. And nowadays, nowadays our, our phone is pretty fast because the CPU is pretty fast. We have uh, dual core, quadruple core, ultra core. But then, the, that's why the optimizing for the memory is the key for your performance on for the mobile applications. And uh, the first thing I talk about is uh, the main thing React is trying to solve the problem is to how to uh, build a UI with data that changes over time. And uh, this is all about the states. <laughs> and 
this is a, a, a concept that is uh, quite confusing and I spent quite a lot of time to understand it back in the days while I was in head reactor. And so uh, all of us are doing Angular, Angular JS and we are familiar with the concept of two-way data binding. When you update a wheel, you update a model. When you update a model, you update a wheel. But it's very really great for single single wheel sing, with a single model, but it's got really complicated when you are talking about multiple models with multiple wheels. And uh, React thinks in a different way. It's not doing dirty checking. It's doing a unit uh, one way data flow. And on your parent uh, the parent component, it manages the states, and then the data is passed it to the children by props, and then the children could have some more children and more children as a hierarchy, and then. One thing is important to remember is state is mutable while props is immutable. What's props? Stand props. For the uh, props is, uh, stand for properties. Oh, just properties. Just oh, properties. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, states uh, is at the top level data. When you use states is when you want to work on some data that changes over time. And one of the examples here is for a React component, you can call the method get initial states and get get a uh, you can get an empty, empty array or a known string, whatever. And then once you get the initial states, you can render the, render the uh, component to your DOM, and then with the empty, empty data. Once it's uh, marked, once the component is marked, and then you can do an AJAX request, send the, from the client to the server, and then get the data back from the server to the client asynchronously. And then once you get the data, you can do a, once it's success, you can call the set state that stays uh, a method, then it will re-render the component with the new with the data. But one thing, remember to uh, to bind this because this is changed, and this is not referring to this React component. So th that's why you need to bind this. And then our props we just talk about is our properties, and it is used for passing down the data, and it cannot be modified. Here's a one of example you can pass in the component, pass in a plain old JavaScript object, and then pass it to uh, this old props the name, and that is random my name. So <laughs> next thing is uh, in your component you can handle your events, and then uh, you can handle it by on click, and then once it's clicked, you call your you create a method uh, in your React component is uh, called increment and get increment is to call set state set state, and then you render your component. And uh, so it's the to recap, why is React is uh, awesome? Because it's simple. It's, uh, it's uh, based on React com component, it's re reusable, it's testable, it's modularized, it's encapsulated. And then it's also fast, and also it's, you can manage data that changes over time for your UI. And uh, that's it. And uh, <laughs> feel free to give me a call or something. We can grab a coffee. Can I ask any questions? <laughs> oh. First of all, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I want to say kudos for getting, I think it's the first speaker that's mentioned big O notation. In, uh, <laughs> <laughs> have you done, have you got any, I just think one thing that might be good or useful to put on the GitHub repository is small code samples, yep. small projects. Yep. Um, because that would be useful for me, because yeah. I haven't really done anything with React myself other than browsing some of the overviews and so on. And there's obviously things like to do MVC, if anyone's you know, seen him use that for you know, cross-referencing different frameworks, but even that's a little more complex, well not complex, but yeah. simple. So I wonder if it might be quite useful to get some you know, code snippets yeah. and small projects or small little samples up there. Yeah. So any other any questions? So anyone who's done anything with React, so, you know, you said you've done yeah. some stuff with React, I, any experiences? For me, the, the challenging part is the J, JSX, because yep. the syntax for me is to, you know, have HTML inside the JavaScript. I'm still trying to get used to it. Yep. So I'm, I was wondering if you have any tips for, you know, getting used to that. Um, uh, <laughs> tips for getting used to it. Actually, sometimes it's also I mean, it's optional. JSX is not uh, yeah. uh, not uh, necessary. You can you just uh, if you don't like it, you can just write vanilla JavaScript as well. But I heard there's some performance uh, yep. benefit of using JSX, yep. right? Yeah, that, that's, that's true. As well. Yeah, so that's why I'm trying to be stubborn. <laughs> get it done. So who owns the JSX format? Is that something invented by Facebook Instagram? Uh, no, JSX would be something uh, not not owned by Facebook. 
So, did they invent it or no, specifically no. only for React? Or what? No, no, no. That, that's, uh, it already exists. It's uh, some technology that already exists. I forgot what's the community, but it already exists, not, not the dimensions. Uh, the other question I have to ask too is, uh, I saw a presentation about this before, yep. and they talked about uh, how MVC doesn't work for them. But the thing about MVC that I don't get, especially to that diagram, it's the same one that they showed in the video that Facebook presented. In that diagram, you're, you're going model to view, and view back to model, which is totally on MVC, right? It should be, basically the controller should be in the middle between the view okay. and the model, right? Or in this case, the model you're saying, the JSON or whatever you want to call it, that's in the view being presented, right? That totally stump you? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying, yeah, yeah. right? So in the case, model means the, the database perpetual side, or model meaning the data that's being presented on the view. I think the data that they're presenting on the view is still handling the UI, the, it's, it's still a concern of the view, because it's, yeah, it's still a concern of the view, of the model. And I think for model you can, uh, nowadays there's a, a flux, flux and other, other you can use, it doesn't matter which uh, backend or which you're using, it's, uh, you can use whatever. So what would this flux go into the, into the stack? It should be, it's quite, uh, it's, uh, different. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, right, okay. Just yeah. high level, is yeah. it, like where does it fit into, because I, I haven't touched flux. It's a uh, handle the data as well. Okay. Uh, it's a full MVC, it's in my it's open contract. Oh, it's another uh, also yeah. open source one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if we have time, but if you don't mind, can you go into a little more detail about how it's a, a one-way data flow? Uh, yeah. uh, I don't have a lot of experience. Um, like, from what I understood from between that is that uh, the, the, the data that's in the model yeah. will be presented in the view for the, for the user, right? Yeah. If anything gets edited in the view, it'll reflect the changes in the model. It'll be propagated to the database, correct? The corporate, sorry, once again. Um, if any, if they if they make any changes in the view, yeah. the data will be changed to the model. In the model, which is, uh, is yeah. what you're you're saying there. And if any data is changed in the model, it'll be reflected. And that's the two way. I think first we need to think of whether we are talking about the same thing for model, and because what what is that is this um, when I say model, model for view yeah, okay. is the is the data that is it, uh, happening on the view is the happening. The model with Angular concept of model would be different. Yeah, I don't have an Angular concept of model yet, so okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm I'm working in Django, so okay. Um, for me, the model is just the database. It's just the database. It's the, the store. Is that the same as what your diagram is trying to communicate? Oh, no, the, the diagram communicating is just the wheel, just the wheel. It's nothing to do with your database. Okay. Nothing to do with that. Yeah. I read the documentation for getting two way events, like whenever you type something in an input yep. box. The way the React documentation have it is that you have to get the actual DOM and get that. Yep. It sounds really hacky. And actually, uh, okay. and so the first question, so that sounds really hacky. So mm -hmm. the, uh, if you really want to get two way events, the two way events are not really uh, fine. Yep. How does React work with that? And secondly, uh, how does it fit with that component? Because I think uh, React has bad gut components, which is like uh, making your own uh, elements, like HTML. And they capture it. And uh, they pretty much ignore the problem of what, what, how do we react to one person? So, what people do we react to? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, to answer our first question about the two way data binding, there's an uh, add, add on library. As, uh, if you want to implement uh, a two way data binding, you can also include an add on so that you can do two way data binding as well uh, if you want to. And then for the second question, I'm not quite sure, so honestly, I don't know how to answer this question. Yeah, I need to figure out as well. Cool. Any other questions? Okay, awesome. Thank you, Victor.